So, hi Robert, thank you for coming today. Um, you did a talk today called Innocent Fraud, Newspapers and the Future of Journalism. What is Innocent Fraud? Well, Innocent Fraud are basically the ideas that we tell ourselves are reality, that in fact are not reality but just our perceptions. And in, the concept was developed by John Kenneth Galbraith, the, the great um, um, economist, and he basically says that much of the time when we're talking about public life and talking about economics and talking about business and policy, where there's a gap between the reality of what we're saying and what is actually occurring. And in newspapers today, um, very clearly, the discussion that's going on is a gap between um, a, a, an ideal notion of what the newspaper should be and actually what's happening in the newspaper industry. And so that's the fraud. We're deluding ourselves often when we say the newspaper is, is all over with and will be dead next year, um, that we can't do journalism in this current environment. Um, that is a delusion, and that's a fraud to ourselves. You made some really sweeping, bold statements in your talk today. One of them was uh, newspapers deserve to die. Um, you know, as I said, it's a false statement, but what do you think about um, the purpose that local newspapers serve? Um, and, you know, the thought that newspapers fuel democracy. Do you still feel... I mean, you, you did actually rightly mention that uh, people need local news, but do you still apply that statement that well, newspapers need to die to no, that? Newspapers are going to die. That's not, a, that's not an issue. They, deserve they, to they, die? they deserve to die when they're badly run. When they're not serving people's needs, they deserve to die. No organ the, the problem is not newspapers. The problem is what do we do about journalism and what does we do about news. Newspapers are a particular form in which information and news are delivered and gathered and delivered. And in the current environment, in, because of technology, the economics, the costs involved, newspapers will not be able to survive in the long run. And as, as someone who looks at, at organizations as a whole, they deserve to die, and they will over the next generation. Print will go away. Now, do the news organizations that put things on newspapers deserve to die? That's another issue. If they are, in fact, badly run, probably so. If they are not serving their purposes, probably so. But we do need news and we do need information, whether it be on a, coming to us on a, on a tablet or coming to us on a screen or on our computers or on our mobiles or whatever. We need somebody gathering the information because people need to know about what's happening around their lives. You know, things like the Financial Times and The Economist, which are based on a sometimes subscription basis, especially The Economist, which is read by top business and international figures all around the world. I mean, don't, don't they count um, as, as seeing as being adapting to the 21st century needs? Do you think they're still going to die well, as well? I think the financial papers and, and magazines have always done better, um, simply because they've had to adapt to serve the business needs because people use them to make business decisions. So, so they adapt. But even then, they're moving f much more rapidly into an electronic area, era than our general newspapers and, and ha actually have online business models that work. They provide a lot of information online that they don't provide offline. And so they're doing quite Quite well. Um, for other kinds of newspapers, um, however, the online is presenting a huge problem for them because they have a different kind of advertising base um, than the financial kind of press. And they get different kinds of advertisers who are leaving in large amounts. Um, and, it, and when that continues, um, it will come a point it will be not enough money to continue the operations that currently exist. We're seeing a glimmer of that now because of the recession, but it's going to get much worse over time as many more advertisers migrate away. I wondered what your response was, as here at the University of Westminster, um, our approach is we learn how to do print, we learn how to do online, we do magazine, we do broadcast, radio, TV. Do you think that that's a good approach to take um, in the future of journalism, as, as we are trainee journalists? Well, certainly there, there, is a, there certainly is a, a usefulness in having flexible skills that can be applied in a variety of ways um, as journalists. But one also needs to be able to have the skills to operate in an environment where you might have to be your own employer rather than just being employed by an organization. Um, magazine journalists for a long time have understood that because most magazine journalists are, are, are uh, freelancers um, and um, uh, book authors have had to deal with that for a long time too. What is happening now in, in, in journalism as we shift out of the mode where everybody is employed by large organizations, we're going to have more and more journalists starting their own organizations or working for smaller organizations and they have 
have to understand and be able to contribute to the running of those organizations as well as to the journalism. There's a common assertion that journalism is dying. Um, do you think people generally are overreacting? I, I do think it's an overreaction. Um, what, is, what is dying um, in the long run, and it's and certainly uh, um, newspapers and the traditional organizations are quite ill, and over a period of time will we'll feel the effects of it. But I'm very optimistic. This is a good time for journalism. This is a time when people are talking about why is journalism important? What does journalism give to society? How can we serve those functions using other types of media um, and other types of structures of news delivery? than the current ones. That is a very positive thing to me, and I think journalism is, is developing in a variety of ways, and we see a lot of really exciting things happening in that regard. But the current mechanisms that we have relied upon traditionally for journalism are in deep trouble, and over, over the next generation will be disappearing. Talking about how journalism, like any form of communication, uh, is a flawed art, and these days, uh, well, before, major stories were often missed. These days, there's so many ways that we can be, you know, news can be provided. Surely, this is a good thing. It's, it's a good thing to have multiple platforms for journalism. It's a good thing to have journalism where it's coming from the internet, coming from television, coming from radio, coming from social networks, coming from individuals that witness things themselves. That's a very healthy thing for journalism. What we have to understand and have to develop now are how do we as human beings and how do organizations that want to collect news um, work with all of those to make it an effective uh, um, information network. Um, someone in the audience, Colin Sparks, I believe, uh, he thought you might be a little bit too optimistic about this transition. Well, I'm, I'm optimistic that we will transit. <laughs> the question is, how, how fast do we trans make the transition? How rocky is the transition? It will be rocky, but we don't know how rocky. But the point is, we will have journalism in the future because we need journalism as individuals and as society. How it will be structured and how it will evolve there, um, we don't really know. But we will evolve to that.